Psalm 143, a Psalm of David. Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one is no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pushed, pursued my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore, my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest you be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way that I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. And in your steadfast love, you will cut off my enemies. And you will destroy all the adversaries of my soul. For I am your servant. Well, this uh, psalm is very similar to Psalm 142, but it's... Uh, it's like a more intense and more expansive uh, version of that psalm. It, it focuses uh, even more on on uh, David's internal life and uh, the uh, the kind of struggles that he's going th- uh, through and the feelings uh, that he uh, was experiencing as uh, he was being uh, persecuted. And so the first half, there's really two halves of the psalm. The first half, one to six, is him being brought low. And then the second half is his growing confidence. And so one to six, we see him brought uh, low. And here, and again, this is different to uh, Psalm 142. Here, there's an acknowledgement of his own sinfulness. It's, it's an implicit acknowledgement. Uh, so he he pleads, he um, cries out to God, makes pleas to God for mercy, and asks God to uh, act in Uh, Verse one, your faithfulness and in your righteousness. But then immediately there's an acknowledgement that uh, that could be a double edged sword uh, for him uh, because he knows that he is not righteous. He knows that no one living is righteous before you. And so he asks God not to enter into judgment uh, with uh, his servant. And here's a wonderful, uh, again, uh, picture of uh, the gospel, even as we uh, pray to God, even as we struggle in a sinful world that is opposed to the gospel we acknowledge that uh, we are really the same as as, as everyone else there's nothing that uh, uh, makes us uh, different other than god's mercy because we are not righteous and uh, this is the point that paul makes in romans 3 wonderfully there's no one righteous but god has made a way through the death and resurrection of the lord jesus for us to be made righteous uh, or declared righteous more uh, justified uh, before him uh, so that's uh, an acknowledgement of his own uh, 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 his own failing. Uh, this, in a sense, he's, he's appealing to God's mercy, and uh, this is kind of not fully kind of resolved and pulled together, as we said, until the the cross. Uh, verses three to four really do bring out the intensity of uh, his experience, and it reminds us a little bit of Psalm eighty nine. Uh, do you remember Psalm uh, Psalm eighty eight? Sorry, that ends with. Um, darkness being his closest companion Um, and you you get this this idea he's been pursued uh, by the enemy and he's verse three crushed my life to the ground he's made me sit in darkness like those long dead and therefore my spirit faints within me my heart within me is appalled Uh, again there is this um, uh, honesty and openness and uh, here is someone who doesn't deny his feelings. He doesn't sort of say, oh, a believer in God shouldn't feel like this. No, he's, he's open with God. He tells God exactly how he's feeling. And uh, it's, it's extreme language, isn't it? My spirit faints within me. Um, I'm sitting in, in darkness. I feel crushed. The life is crushed out of me. My heart is appalled. Again, um, we're not saying that, um, you know, all our mental struggles will be solved um, by this kind of... Uh, practice in the Christian life not saying that at all there's obviously there's there's medical issues but I think often in the church we we've we've lost this idea that it, it's good to be honest and open with God it's, it's good to be to express um, our, our, our feelings our longings our struggles in the context of of faith um, 
uh, uh, to God. And I, I think that will, uh, that will help us. And we see even in the next uh, two verses, five to six, still in the first half of the psalm, there's a turning point. And uh, what David does is he, he looks back, he remembers the day of uh, days of old, and, and not just kind of cursive, uh, in a cursory sense, I meditate on all that you have done. He thinks he's disciplined in his thinking about what God has done in the past. And he ponders, again, this idea of spending time thinking about what God has done. Ponder the work of your hands. And not just so that he can be nostalgic. Uh, some of us um, are prone to nostalgia. I think I'm like that. We, we just dwell on the past. Oh, wouldn't it have been, wouldn't, we, wouldn't it be better if we were back there? But that, that's not what David does because as he, as he looks back, it pushes him forward because verse six, having pondered what God has done in the past, he stretches out his hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. It's, it's meditating on what God has done in the past that kind of leads him to express his faith in God in uh, the present. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, 7 to 12, second half of the, the psalm, we see this growing confidence uh, in God as he prays. He's still being, being honest, but, you know, answer me quickly, O Lord, my spirit fails. Hide not your face uh, from me, lest I be like those who go down uh, to the pit. And uh, again, his appeal is on the basis of verse 8, steadfast love and the fact that he trusts in him. And uh, he's also aware that uh, for God to answer him, uh, he wants to uh, respond to God's uh, answering his prayer in a way that will glorify God. And so uh, verse uh, nine, second half, make me know the way that I should go for you in you. I lift up my soul or verse 10. Teach me to do your will for you are my God. Uh, let your good spirit uh, lead me on level ground. And again, wonderful echoes of, of Romans eight. Romans eight, we, you know, we the, the law was unable to deliver us. Uh, what God did by sending his son as a sin offering. And so the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us. Lots of kind of verbal echoes there. And then he talks about uh, those of us who uh, have been um, delivered in this way. We're children of God. We walk by the Spirit. And that's exactly what David is expressing here, this, this desire to walk by the Spirit. Let your good spirit uh, lead me on uh, level ground. And then verses 11 and 12, there is this uh, kind of final prayer. And again, it's on the basis of uh, uh, your righteousness, your namesake for the glory of your name and uh, an appeal to his steadfast love. And again, this wonderful um, way in which David can can move between these ideas of, of God's righteousness, his, his uh, uprightness of character, but also his steadfast love. And uh, the, the appeal... Um, it's, it's striking that, you know, in your steadfast love towards me, you will defeat my enemies. And again, uh, we see this in the, in the gospel. This, uh, this psalm, and so many of the psalms are, just a pattern of uh, the gospel, of what God has done for us. Because in his love, he sent Christ. And yes, uh, Christ paid the penalty for our sins uh, and so reconciled us to God. But also on the cross, he defeated uh, sin and Satan and death are enemies. He delivered us and uh, he did it out of his steadfast love. He did it uh, through his righteousness. The cross was the ultimate righteous act. Um, it was not a, it was not kind of fudging. It was um, a God rightly dealing with sin. And so he could free his uh, people and then uh, gave us his Holy Spirit so that we can uh, walk in his way. So a wonderful uh, pattern of the gospel uh, in this psalm, a wonderful encouragement for us, even in the intensity of opposition, uh, to keep praying to God. Uh, let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this uh, psalm, which points us so uh, wonderfully and clearly to the gospel. Thank you that you have acted in your steadfast love to defeat our enemies. Uh, you have acted in a way that is righteous, uh, so that we can be right with you uh, through Jesus. And you've given us your spirit uh, to lead us on level ground. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.